Hey everyone and welcome back to the Schneid's 15 YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about uh, some suspension setting tips. Uh, I'll admit I'm not a professional on this. Uh, I'm just going to explain this basically a dummy's way of how to set suspension and just how to give everybody some general knowledge. I've figured all this stuff out myself from owning snowmobiles and uh, just tinkering around with them myself and reading on it, uh, trying to educate myself. So I thought I'd share my knowledge with you guys and hopefully we can help you guys tune your suspension good for on off trail, uh, for your, your weight. There's all kinds of different uh, factors on what goes on with a snowmobile suspension. So uh, our main parts that I'm gonna list uh, depends if you how good of a package of a snowmobile you have. I'm gonna try and uh, make this a generic video, but uh, if you have any base package snowmobile, you're just gonna have uh, shocks that look like this. You're not gonna have any uh, preload adjustment on them or or uh, dampening adjustment on them. I should say, you're just gonna have a spring on them that you can. This one has a spring remove that you can get your spring preload, you can stiffen that. You're gonna have two of those on the front, obviously, one in the front of your skid, one in the back of the skid, and uh, you're gonna have torsion springs. So uh, let's get to talking about uh, what, what different factors of the suspension do, and uh, I'm gonna try and make a couple little uh, demonstrations on, so you can physically see what's uh what's going on so first off we're going to talk about preload so preload um on your f higher suspension package sleds like the skidoo x package you're going to have a threaded piece up here and on your lower package ones you're going to have notches so uh the higher the notches the more pressure it puts on your spring Therefore, the stiffer your spring's gonna be uh, to stiffen up your front end. So if you're taking it off big jumps and stuff, you're gonna want your preload higher, depending, uh, we'll get to that later. And uh, that's your preload, is basically compressing your springs uh, on themselves before you're like just sitting in the garage, before you're hitting a jump or something. They're already compressed, so they're already stiffer when you go to hit something. Uh, next, we're going to go to the back of the sled and uh, talk about uh, dampening. Dampening is uh, basically how fast your shocks can push in. So you can have your suspension set soft on your preload side and you can control your bottoming out by your dampening. So uh, your dampening is basically how fast this goes in. So if uh, it's really stiff, and you hit a big bump, like you come off a jump and hit a big wham, you have your dampening tightened up, it's gonna be stiff and not go in as fast. And if it's slow, it's gonna go in really fast. So to make this easier and just to uh, try and ex explain the dampening better, cause it's kinda hard to understand, but you just gotta think it, there's a valve in there that's, to put it into perspective, it's either small or big. So what I've done is took these two water bottles and what I've done is you can see in the top there, there's a small hole in this one and a big hole I've drilled in it. They're both full of water. So pretend that uh, this is in two pieces. One ends this end of the shock, one ends this end of the shock. Uh, so first off, we're gonna start out with our small one. So if I take, I'm just gonna take this here for water. So if we have our small one with our small hole in it and you come off of a big jump, so I'm just gonna hold this upside down when I do it, I just got this here so the water won't drain out. Uh, you come off of a big jump and your suspension goes to wham down and you got your valving, uh, your dampening tightened up, it, uh, it's gonna hit and as you can see it, it speeds up, but it still doesn't go down that fast. So that's, it's thick. It's, it makes it stiffer and you're not gonna bottom out as much. You're just... And then, 
So that's if you're stiff, but if you have your dampening loosened off, you come over and it's like having that valve fairly open. So when you come off that jump and you land, uh, whether it be on your front shocks or your back, uh, then like I said again, on your lower package uh, sleds, you're not even gonna have dampening, but on your higher package sleds, you are. So uh, you come off this big jump and you're landing, and your valving, your dampening is backed off. That means the hole is bigger technically. Uh, you're gonna land, and the instant you land, you're gonna go like this. See how easy that water bottle goes in compared to the last one? So, therefore, your shock compresses down faster because all that fluid can go through to the other part of the shock faster. So, if you have it tight, it's gonna be more of a like the small hole and it's gonna to want to go down slower and there you can see that water bottle just collapsed there so it takes so much longer to get the volume through that shock and therefore gives you a stiffer ride so there's different uh, applications for your dampening and stuff but I just want to get through the main theory of how dampening works that if you have your dampening stiff or tightened up it's gonna have a small that small hole and it's gonna compress hard and therefore give you a stiffer ride if you have it slow when you're going down the bumpy trail and you want it to compress really quick instead of bounce over the top you have that dampening loosened off so you got that big hole so your suspension compresses nicely and you can go down the trail like that gives you a really good ride but if you're out hitting huge jumps all the time uh and you're not trail riding you're probably gonna have your dampening tightened up because it has to take that big shock of coming off a 10 foot jump or something right away and if that valving was open all the way it's just gonna bottom out so that's enough for uh dampening we're gonna next talk about our uh, torsion springs all right so I had to pull the camera off the tripod for this one we're gonna have to get under the sled and show you uh, so your torsion springs uh, I'm just gonna show you them physically before I get to explaining about them and what they do so they're under here every sleds gonna have a different uh, setup so you got right here you got a torsion spring here and on the other side you have two of them they have a little short arm right here that'll rest in the back and then the other arm comes down here. So as uh, the lower package sleds and most sleds will have blocks under here, a five sided block and as you twist it it's like a cam and it pushes up more on this torsion spring therefore making it stiffer and on this snowmobile you have the quick adjust which uh, as I crank on this, you can see I'm turning it right now. Uh, that piston, there's just a piston in there. It's just a hydraulic piston. As I turn this, you can see that coming up there and it's doing the exact same thing as, as uh, the sleds that have the blocks that turn to make your suspension stiffer, but it's easy to access. That's why they have the quick adjust uh, system. It's really handy and uh, I really like it and I'll explain why after. All right, so now that you know how the torsion springs work, uh, we're gonna explain what they do. So you're gonna have uh, your base to start with. So if you're a 150 pound guy or something, you're probably gonna have, have them set on level one or have them set down at the bottom of this quick adjust or on any sled on number one on the block. So they're on their softest setting because you don't weigh enough you're not pushing the ass end of the sled down but if you get some guy on there that's 200 220 240 pounds when they sit on the sled it's gonna go down like that and uh you don't want that that's gonna take all your pressure off of your skis and you're gonna have terrible handling so if you're, I want to say over 180 pounds plus, you probably want to upgrade your torsion springs to heavier set. Most guys don't, but if you're really caring about riding and want to rip, that's what you're going to want to do. But if, say you're, I'm 155 pounds, so most riders, a lot of guys are around my size, uh, younger guys I should say, 
and uh, it all depends there's all different sorts of builds guys but i'm a pretty small guy so for me i keep this pretty low because i sit on this sled and it goes down an inch or whatever it barely goes down so that's fine for me but what the torsion springs do is they give you ski pressure so sometimes when i'm on the trails even if my suspension goes down normal like it should that's how i want it for bumpy trails but if i'm on a flat groomed trail sometimes i don't have the steering that i should and i want to tear through the bush around corners and stuff and you want that sled to grab you can crank up those torsion springs and keep them stiff and it's going to put an amazing amount of pressure on your skis basically a preload of weight on your skis and it's going to make that sled handle amazing but if you get to the chop then you're going to be bouncing all over the place because it's preloaded stiff so you're going to want to loosen that off again so i realize every sled you can't do it with like the quick adjust on these sleds so if you have uh the blocks underneath you got one to five you're you're gonna have to experiment with it bring your wrench along it doesn't take a huge amount of work but you're gonna want to spin those nubs and uh see what you like you usually get them set how you like and uh you, you live with it but with this quick adjust system if i'm coming down a bumpy trail all of a sudden i hit groom trail i crank that up and i got a ton of ski pressure i can come around and corner like crazy have really great handling and you just can't do that with other sleds so that's why this quick adjust, adjust system by skidoo is so nice uh so that's enough for our torsion springs and uh i think that's pretty much pretty much everything all right guys so we're pretty much gonna wrap up the video here uh i labeled the video uh as suspension setting tips because like i say i'm no professional on uh setting up a sled and i can't set your sled up over the internet because as i went over there's so many different variables uh if you're a hard aggressive rider uh you're gonna have your suspension tuned a lot different than the guy that's driving the trails nicely and slows down for bumps and isn't hammering through them and stuff and then when we get to our weights uh we're gonna you're gonna have uh, different setups on your torsion springs for different weights of people whether you weigh 220 pounds or 150 pounds and uh your trail conditions if your trails are smooth uh if they're really uh hard packed snow and really hooking up nice uh if they're uh soft and you're skidding around you're gonna want to have more pressure uh so i'll just go over it quick and just start from back to front and talk about what you should do and what you shouldn't do so just kind of a general thing for everybody so so you get on this thing, Skidoo has a thing, I think it's one and a half to two inches or something of uh, sag you want when you sit on it. But that's again only for this arm motion suspension. So uh, if you're 200 pounds, you sit on this thing, you're going to want to bring this quick adjust up. So you don't collapse way down, you're going to want it so it stays stiffer. And if you're uh, a light guy, you're going to want to leave it fairly loose because it's not going to go down very much. And with your torsion springs uh basically we'll do it for simplicity the tighter your torsion spring the more ski pressure the more preload you have on your ass end here for a heavier guy uh the less preload on your torsion springs the less ski pressure you have and the more sag you're gonna get depending on the rider uh dampening so you're bottoming out a lot and stuff you're gonna want to have your dampening tightened up before you tighten up your torsion springs because if you have your torsion springs cranked up it's going to really uh you're not going to get the full travel out of your suspension uh you're gonna be using so you don't bottom out you're just tightening up your torsion springs and you're not getting the full uh travel and cushion that you should but if you tighten up your dampening say you got 20 notches you're bottoming out at five you turn it up to 10 you're still bottoming out or getting close you turn it up to 15 say and then on your hard trails there it's going to be using your whole suspension with in conjunction with your torsion springs rather than being stiff right away with your uh 
torsion springs taken at all and not giving your suspension the full compression like it should have to give you a nice ride. Going towards your preload on your front and your dampening, like I said, a lot of sleds won't have damping on the front or the back unless you're an X package or a higher package in Polaris and Arctic Cat, Snow Pro, whatever. Uh, it all depends what, if you got a race sled or a trail sled or a touring sled, like I said. So this is more rider preference, but if you find yourself bottoming out a lot, you can tighten up your dampening. But if you're the guy that likes to corner fast and stuff, you want the, the preload set up fairly stiff because when you come around those corners, you want it to be stiff. You don't want to have a lot of body roll. You want it to stay stiff and so you can raise your edge around those corners. Uh, so you kind of want to find a happy medium there. I like mine set up fairly uh, stiff because when you're at higher speeds going across the lake, it stays fairly stiff. You're not kind of getting any roll when you're hitting stuff. I just like the stiffer ride. Sure, it's gonna be a little, if you're concerned about ride, yes, it's gonna be more stiff with more preload. But for me, I sacrifice it and I prefer the ride of it. It makes me feel more stable with them a little bit stiffer. And then, if so I set it, so when I do my front, I usually go across the lakes and if I'm feeling too much, I tighten it up, uh, whether it be a notch on your shock or a couple turns and feel it if then once my body roll goes away and stuff and I'm happy with that then when I get into the hard or the trails with the dips and stuff in them and I feel it uh, really if I start to bottom out I tighten up the clickers and up like say six notches or so I think that's about where I usually run mine and that sets that valving nice so I'm not bottoming out it it makes that uh, hole smaller like getting back to the water bottle theory there and uh, it gives it more cushion or stiffens it up and uh, you got kind of got to find your happy medium anyways guys I think that's about all like I said uh, before you throw uh, any comments my way I'm not a professional uh, shock guy or spring guy I'm just telling you guys from the everyday's man everyday man's experience on riding and putting on thousands upon thousands of miles, how I've tuned my suspensions and how I like them and what I've found worked. That's why I thought I would make this video because there's a lot of guys that are looking, their, their sled handles terrible in the corners, they're blowing corners and stuff. They can watch this video and take a few minutes out of their day and uh, see that if you stiffen up your torsion springs and stuff, you're gonna get uh, more ski pressure to corner, uh, corner nicely and just you can get a general idea basically for uh, shocks for dummies and uh, yeah that's basically just how to sus set a suspension up really on any sled but uh, if you have a skiddy with our motion it's more particularly for these sleds and uh, yeah I, I really hope this video helps you guys and uh, like I said just before you send a comment my way I'm not a professional on this but for the everyday guy this is going to help you and give you a great guide on how to set up your suspension and I'm sure that by watching this video it's really really going to help you make your sled uh, feel better and the way that you want it just by knowing some of the facts behind it. Anyways thanks for watching guys and uh, check out my other videos on uh, these skidoos if you have a 1200 I got lots of videos on them and uh, lots of stuff on the our motion suspension and stuff check out my other videos thanks for watching guys as always guys thanks for watching and please give the channel a like and a subscribe if my videos interest you please click on my channel and check out my other videos